Let's get it. This is Life's Essential Ingredients with Jeff and a mic, where we hope to inform, inspire, and transform lives one essential ingredient at a time. Welcome to the show. Listeners, this is how we do it. It's going to be a crazy episode, and thank you for tuning in again. Pasha, we're 41 countries, 603 cities. We are Season 3, Episode 25 with Nancy Pickard coming from Aspen, Colorado. Uh, For those of you that don't tune into YouTube uh, for us and are just listening, Nancy's giving us the business before we even start the show. Just saying, hey, are you two brothers? And if you're a first-time listener, Mike and I have been best friends since we were 18 and freshman on the campus of University of San Francisco playing basketball. Mike's 6'7", I'm 6'8", and I don't know if I was ever called Jeff uh, for my four years, and uh, I was always called Mike, and Mike was called Jeff, and so Nancy comes on and says, hey, are you two brothers? And so it's just a fun way for us to kind of start the show. But again, if you are first-time listeners, this podcast is really part of a nonprofit. The nonprofit is called C4 Leaders, and we are the only nonprofit, Nancy, to utilize the pizza-making process to create space for our companions to be seen, heard, and loved. We write children's books, host this podcast, obviously, and use the most amazing handmade, hand-tossed sourdough pizza to bring out the best in each other. So if you're interested in that, check out pizzadays.org. That's where you can find uh, our books. Uh, And we just released our second one, Lucy's Secret Sauce. So if there's any dog lovers or just anybody that wants to read a really good book, um, it's about my second boxer, uh, Lucy. Really, really heartfelt story. But let's get into our guest today. Again, it's Nancy Pickard coming from Aspen, Colorado. And first of all, listeners, the best place to find her, just go to her website. And it's Nancy Pickard Life Coach. Dot com And I'm going to spell her last name, P-I-C-K-A-R-D, and then lifecoach.com, all one word. So about our guest, she lives by example. In 2017, she traveled alone to Thailand and Vietnam and undertook her biggest challenge, climbing Kilimanjaro at the age of 61. Coaching others to step out of fear and into bigger versions of themselves is her passion. Nancy is a certified integrative coach through the Ford Institute for Transformational Training. She is certified as a breakthrough shadow coach, empowered parent coach, courage coach, healing your heart coach, leadership coach, holistic lifestyle coach, and bigger, better, braver coach. She is the author of her book, Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage, Transform your life. Nancy, thanks for sharing your gifts with the world, for helping thousands of people find their way, overcome fear, and live bigger, better, and braver. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. My posh is fired up. I see him kind of sitting on the edge of his seat, Nancy. So he's a little bit hyped up for today. Uh, and he sent me this style of the day for you, and it's from Amelia Earhart. And here's the quote, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. The fears are paper tigers. You can do anything you decide to do. You can act to change and control your life. And the procedure, the process is its own reward. Why would I pick that one for you? Because I say the juice is in the journey. Mm. And, um It's not about whether you win or lose. It's about stepping in and stepping outside your comfort zone and moving towards that vision and goal that you have. And once you step in, all of the angst and all of the drama and all of the anxiety is gone because you're in. And so if you can just enjoy the journey, whether you win or lose, there are lessons and gifts along the way. And those are that's the meat of it. Look, look for those. If you fall, you fall forward. Maybe it wasn't your time. Maybe there was something else you still needed to learn. But the way you feel about yourself just for stepping in is the gold. 
Love it. So it's really that, the end of that quote, the process is its own reward. You know, exactly. uh, I love how you're saying fall forward and just kind of use every opportunity of you overcoming your fear. Just say, man, just, just getting into that space is allowing me to grow. Uh, and then maybe knowing that, Hey, it's not, maybe it wasn't my time to complete that goal, but I took a step towards achieving it. Uh, and therefore I'm going to be one step closer, uh, when my time is right. Uh, I want to get in before, before, uh, we lose it on this episode. I, I want you to talk us through climbing Kilimanjaro at, at 61 and just, yeah, give the listeners, uh, some insight uh, to that challenge and overcoming that? Well, I highly recommend it to anybody who wants some kind of physical and spiritual and emotional challenge. It was one of the the best things I ever did. Um, and if you, uh, if you already are pretty good in altitude, then there's really no reason why you can't do it. It's not like it's the hardest climbing challenge in the world, but it is gets up to 19, 341. So you have to be able to practice at 14ers and know that you're going to be okay in altitude, uh, which I was. And I owned a personal training gym for 16 years. So I'm really, I overtrained and I got there and nobody was, everyone was from five to 40 years younger than me. You know, I mean, there were 20 year olds on this thing and, but nobody could go the way I went. And so I ended up with my own Sherpa doing my own thing because this was something I had really trained for, for six months. And I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. Not the way somebody who comes with a cold and hadn't trained wanted to do it. And so it took me a day to get my message clear, but I did. And then I had the best experience of my life. It was just amazing. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, let's get into, we always start the show uh, kind of the same way, just because I want the listeners to kind of get to, to know you and you can share whatever aspect of the question you want, because um, it's a broad one. What was life like growing up? I had a really good childhood. I was um, the youngest of three girls and my sisters sort of paved the way. So all the things that they weren't allowed to do by the time it got to me, I could just do them without fr freely. And, um, you know, I'm a relationship and marriage coach now for the last year and a half. That's what I've been working with. And I just cannot believe how much trauma and drama so many people have had. And even if you thought you had a, a pretty good childhood, we all have trauma that happens to us. And, but the more I work with couples, the more I really appreciate what a, an amazingly grounded, safe environment I grew up in. You keep, you keep working and working and working, you know, and I doubt that's even all the, in the introduction all these different coaching certificates, yeah. you know, so you're just taking in more knowledge and this is just going to be the dumbest question you've ever heard, but, but why, why do you continue to just push yourself and challenge yourself and, and immerse yourself in all these different certifications? Uh, and now, you know, you're adding a, another one. Yeah. And I'm also a boundary coach. We missed that one because that's a big one. People love that one. But to answer your question, I have a growth mindset. So I'm curious. And I guess every time I get a client that has a problem that I don't think I know enough about, then I will ser search out how to get more tools for my toolbox in that area. Um and becoming this relationship and marriage coach, I really started to fall in love with Terry Reel's books. He's phenomenal. And it was in his last book called Us that I that I heard him talk about his relational life therapists and coaches. And I, I didn't even know that that was something I could do. So I kind of jump in and wherever that takes me is where it takes me. You know, I'm, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I'm 67 years old and 
I'm a grandmother of four and I live a really great life and I don't work full time. So taking on more things is just a way to fill fill up my life even more. And I enjoy it. Listen, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing it. So I must really love learning. Now, was it always like that for you, you know, growing up when you were younger and um, did you always just seek knowledge or was there something inside you that had happened and then you found this confidence and this growth and this transformation through education and empowering yourself through knowledge or yeah, what, cause it's, it, you're, you're learning all the time and I get, you know, growth mindset and all that, but it just seems like you take on more and more and more. And it seems not unusual is not the right word, but unusual to keep like adding another thing. Well, I don't think, I mean, you know, I, I have a BA in psychology and sociology and a master's in education. And then I went on to having children. And so there was a big span where I was not doing any, I owned a gym, but I wasn't really doing anything other than that and raising my kids and being a wife and mother. Uh, when my marriage fell apart and I fell apart, um, I think I just eventually started to reinvent myself. And so in that new reinvention, I just haven't stopped. And I just, I think that the business itself calls for more and more tools. So if I live in integrity with my word and with my teaching and my coaching, then I have to keep trying to have as many tools as I can to help people the best way I can. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And speaking of tools and then we're going to kind of get, get more into the show here, but have you seen a difference in the past, say three, four years of needing kind of different tools from the pandemic or, or just time or, or things, you know, always just life is full of challenges and yeah, you just want to continue to get better and better. I think that during the pandemic, there was a a need to help people pivot, you know, to help people not just get stuck in now what, but okay, this happened. I may not be able to do A, B, and C, but what can I do? How do I change my life now? How do I make my life work for me? It may not look the way it was going to look. It may not work the way I thought it was going to work, but how do I make it work instead of just getting like a deer in the headlight and and being stuck? So teaching people and watching people's reaction to the pandemic, those that thrived and those that didn't, And what are you teaching your children and how are you teaching your children to be bigger, better, braver and to pivot and to be able to move forward was a big part of what came out of the pandemic. Not everybody was able to to wrap their head around that, but those that did thrived. Mm. All right. Speaking of thriving, you're doing incredible things, look great at 67 and uh, have obviously great energy to, to do what you do. How do you do that? And specifically, what are your life's essential ingredients that you kind of incorporate each and every day to empower yourself to bring the best version of you on that day? I exercise every single day out in nature, every single day. Like I just, that's a big part of what inspires me, what makes me feel good, what energizes me. And what keeps me healthy and strong. Um, I eat organic. I eat really healthy. um, I take good supplements. And I have a really good work-life balance, work and play. I play every day. I play more than I work. But I work every day. And, um, and, you know, I have a partner. I have four and a half grandchildren. I have two great sons and great grand, you know, daughter-in-laws and a good partner. So I, I have a nice mix going on in my life right now and it takes a lot of work and I'm just, I, I really believe that the universe has my back. And so when something happens that I didn't expect or doesn't go my way, 
I look at it and I say, you know, so what am I supposed to be learning here? What's the lesson that I need to learn so I'm not here again? And that's been a big part of my second half of my life. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you've developed a a great self-awareness to be able to tap into those lessons and learn from them. And how do you, I think that's a great skill to have. And there's so many people that we have on the show, you know, talk about the importance of self-awareness. How do you help your clients? If you're working with somebody that maybe just isn't in that space, you know, to be self-aware for a bunch of different reasons, but what tips would you give to the listeners to increase that important skill of being self-aware? Well, I mean, I think that's multifaceted. So number one, um, you have to, re- if you can recognize that, that you know, life happens for you and not to you, then when something doesn't go right, you just look at it and, and figure out, you know, I was last, about two weeks ago, I was on a white water rafting trip in the Snake River. And I'm the only one on the trip that got hurt. And I also the oldest one on the trip. So and I was really afraid of the white water rafting. So it was amazing for me that I could calm myself enough to do it. And we went down a 21 foot rapid and I wasn't nervous. But then at the end, I fell. I fell badly. Like I didn't land in my seat. I landed over and I landed on somebody's metal water bottle. So I had to say to myself, what's the lesson here? You know, and the good lesson was that I was able to conquer my fear. So that was bravo. I'm glad I did it. But maybe it's 67. Think twice about some of the things that you're doing because your recovery will be much longer and maybe you don't have the same proprioceptive ability. Who knows what? But obviously there was something I needed to learn. And maybe it's just, yes, be bigger, better, braver, but Also, remember that you're 67 years old, you know, and even though you see yourself as an athlete, you are the only one that got hurt. So there's something to that. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, Mike and I, we told you, I think, uh, off the air that we played college basketball. And so we're all three, you know, athletes. But now, you know, we just had our our birthdays. My birthday is July 2nd and Mike's July 5th. And and we're younger than you, 54 but you can kind of feel from kind of roughing your body up a little bit, you know, and it's interesting you bring that up. And I did read your blog and listeners again, uh, check out Nancy's website, Nancy Pickard life She writes a great blog. And I read about how you hurt your coccyx, uh, in, yeah. in the blog and, um, you know, what you're sharing now was going to bring that up. And, and so I guess that's like, and I'm more so talking out loud, you know, you want to continue to do things in life that make you feel alive, but at the same time, you know, for, and I won't speak for Mike, you know, but for me, I don't know if it's worth it to get out and play basketball, you know, anymore. Cause you're, you get nicked up and you get hurt and, but you miss just mixing it up, you know? And so I guess finding other, other parts of your life where you can somewhat capture that competitive spirit, so to say, but without, you know, kind of taking the risk of injuring yourself, but, but life is, is full of risk. You know, any, anytime you get in a car or even just get up and walk, and there's just so much chance of things that can go wrong. And I don't even know if I have a question and you kind of just tossed it out, but you know, what is that? How would you advise, you kind of did it to yourself a little bit, but how would you advise somebody that's getting up in age a little bit, but still wants to mix it up, still wants to live, but doesn't want to pay a price to, you know, totally change their lifestyle by doing something that could be fun. But well, now I, I have to limp the rest of my life, you know? So yeah. What's that balance? Is Look, I don't have a magic ball. I, I play pickleball three times a week. You know how many times people get hurt playing pickleball? So I think that I still am a big believer in go for it, do it. You you know, the last person on the couch still beats the last person in a race still beats the person on the couch. Right. So get out there and do it, but be a little bit more cognizant that, you know, you may not have the same, you know, it's like, 
I'm, I used to be a weightlifter. And if I go out now, I go to the gym and I lift weights, I could still make myself lift really heavy weights. I'd probably make it through and then I would be able to walk for a week. Right. So it's like, just because you can do something doesn't mean that it's actually the right thing to do. On the other hand, don't stop doing anything. So I guess that's sort of, you know, don't, don't take, don't take crazy chances, but don't stop trying new things. Just don't. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And I, yeah, no, I, we'll, we'll move on other after this little statement, but I think, yeah, as we start to age, um, you, you use it or lose it, you know, and I know you just, you got to keep moving, you know, in some, some way, whatever that is for you, but listeners, just make sure you keep getting out there and moving and, and taking uh, good care of yourself. But let's get into your book. First of all, congratulations, you Thank know, you. on becoming an author and getting that out there. Um, what was the uh, uh, first question? What was the, like an unexpected result that you're like, man, I never thought this was going to happen when I wrote this book and it's kind of opened up these doors or it's resulted in this, but something kind of unusual that's, that's happened because you've authored the book. Yeah. Well, it came out right during the beginning of the pandemic. And so I was invited to do a little talk about it, my book and the pandemic and how to pivot on extra TV. So that would not have happened. I can tell you, you know, that would not have, would, wouldn't probably have happened for me. So that was actually a plus. And um, it's really good for branding. Like I'm not, I don't have more books in me. It's, you know, my partner is, um, he also taught basketball, by the way, in um, high school basketball forever. And both of his sons teach high school basketball now. And he's a lawyer and now he's a writer and a ghostwriter. And um, so he's a writer. I was an author. You know, I I wanted to write a book that was going to be for people who maybe can't afford a life coach or don't even know they need a life coach, but they they want the skills and they want to and they want to try to do it on their own. So my book is a self-help, how to do it step by step by step, how to get out of your comfort zone get your disempowering beliefs out of your brain, move forward, you know, have faith versus fear and how to do it. And so that's, I had that in me. I wanted to share that with the world and make that process available for anybody. You know, I think the book is $18. So it's a lot cheaper than hiring a coach. And um, that, so that was the impetus for it, but, it's just been fun. You know, I have bigger, better, braver hats that all my friends and clients have. And, you know, it's just been, it's been a really nice addition to my life. Well, Nancy, you've got a ton of energy. It's amazing. I need some of that. But my question is, how do I know if I need a life coach? What are my signs? Um, are you stuck? Do you feel stuck? Sometimes, yes. Is there something you say you want that you're not getting? Like, if you ask the if you can answer the question, I say I want X, but what I'm experiencing is Y, then you need somebody to help you uncover what's keeping you getting Y instead of X. And so that kind of goes with almost anybody, whether they want a new job or they want a new partner or they want a partner or they don't want a partner or they want to move across the country or they want to go to dinner alone or they want to lose 30 pounds or they want to run a marathon. Any of those things, we all do better with an accountability partner, somebody who's going to be there. You know, my clients basically do not come back saying, um, I did it. Oh, I'm so happy I did it. They come back saying I did it because I knew I couldn't come back and tell you I didn't do it. So I'm a really, I'm very compassionate, but I'm also hardcore. You're going to follow through on the actions that you say you're going to do. And so that gets people where they want to go. It's not talk therapy. It's action oriented. 
but I do help them uncover the wounds from their inner child that, you know, needs, we have disempowering beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'm broken. I'm not, you know, my needs will never be met. I can't do it alone. Uh, I'm too old. It's not my time. Any of those things will keep you from getting where you want to go. But if you don't even know you have those beliefs because they're in your subconscious, you're always going to be going upstream, you know, like the salmon going upstream. Yeah, I wanted to explore that, you know, and I wasn't calling it disempowering beliefs. But if there is a listener that just has that voice in their head that is telling them they're less than, they're not good enough, they're not smart enough, where would you suggest they start, you know, outside of hiring you or another coach? Um, But, you know, what's the first step someone can take who's in that space? Well, outside of hiring a coach and outside of um, buying my book, you could do that too. The other thing is to just answer that question about, I say I want X, but what I'm experiencing is Y, because that's the thing you're more committed to. So like, if you say, I want to be, I want to be in a relationship, but what I'm experiencing is finding everything wrong with every date I go on. Well, then there's something you're more committed to. And that commitment is like staying safe, keeping your heart small, staying closed. You know, so just start saying to yourself, I say, I want to lose 20 pounds. I mean, do you know how many people? I mean, I have friends that, you know, when I lose 10 pounds, well, you've been my friend for 40 years and you haven't lost those 10 pounds. So You've got to figure out why you're not, what are you more committed to than losing the 10 pounds? Cause you're really not committed to losing the 10 pounds. You just say you are. So, I mean, the thing about coaching is it's not therapy. You don't have to sign up your life away. Five, 10, 15 sessions, you'll have gotten the knowledge and the tools that stay with you. And so I help them move through whatever it is they're trying to move through and get to, but those tools go with them. I love it. I love it. I just uh, had another guest on yesterday that we were listening, uh, you know, recording the show and I'm always taking notes. So don't, when I have my head down, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not worried. I'm writing all kinds of things uh, down, but he just talked about, you know, opening the door you know, and, and having the clients uh, walk in and to be able to walk out. And that's his goal that they then can go open all kinds of other doors, similar to what you're, you know, talking about now with all your different methodologies that you've been educated on and, and have as tools. And I don't know if you're going to be able to answer the questions. It's not going to be targeted, but is there one or two of them that you really appreciate more than the others um, that have really spoke to you or you just need them all because it's all, and I know it's all dependent upon the client and what's going on, but is there certain ones that kind of you feel are better fits just to, in general? Um, I think the shadow work, uncovering what's in people's self-conscious, helping them uncover the events that caused and started those beliefs and how those beliefs helped them as a child, but they're co- what they're costing them now as an adult. Um, Terry Rail will say adaptive then, maladaptive now. Like we all do things so that our our we can survive the environment that we grew up. So we adapt, we have adaptations and those adaptations keep us safe as a child, but as an adult, they keep us small or they might be good when you're alone, but if you want to be in a relationship, they, they're they hurting your relationship. So um, I think the shadow work, the uncovering those beliefs is really key. I think faith over fear, recognizing that the universe has your back. So everything happens for a reason. Even if you don't know the reason, there is a reason. Once you can really own that, then you let go of a lot of the angst and drama 
And you can understand that it's your journey. It's your children's journey. Everybody has their own journey and lessons to learn. And so you you need to let everybody have them. That's really key. And then now in my relationship work, I teach such great tools for communication with your partner. And um, a key tool that I love talking about is relational generosity. You give your partner whatever they want as long as it doesn't cost you too much. You know, a lot of times they'll be like, why do I need to do that? Well, because you live with the person and you want them happy. So it's not about right or wrong or who's up and who's down. It's you want to be same as and you want to be relationally generous to each other. And I think all of those three things are probably the pillars of my work. Mm, I love it. I want to come back to the shadow work. I, I like that name and I, I love that that work that you're doing in that space. What happens if you're working with a client? Do you ever have to like refer out if the clients just they pushed it so deep that they don't even know kind of how to tap into that space from uh, the trauma that they've been in? And do you ever have to refer someone out to to some other you know, professional that can help kind of get into that space. Sure. If somebody's traumas are so deep and severe and multiple, um, I can you can I can recommend a trauma coach for them, and I can also recommend there are certain places where they they're like trauma boot camps, and I have definitely recommended some of my client couples that one or both of them really need to go and do a whole week, if not more, of trauma work so that they don't pass it on to their generate to the next generation and also so that they can be a more relational partner. Yeah, no, I've never even heard of those. So, um, well, that's great that there's those resources uh, out there um, because I know life is, uh, is not easy. And, and so many things happen and we, we push it down and then it gets to be in a space where we don't even know what happened in the first place and getting help from people that can help us, uh, you know, uncover that. Um, what, what would you say if I just asked you to talk about life and simplicity? Is there any, anything good in, in living a simple life? Yeah, I don't live one, but, but um, I do actually really try hard to balance my working in and my working out and consumption and, you know, what I need, what I don't need. I'm always in check of myself. So simplicity is great, but that's not the same as being stuck or not moving forward. It's just, what do you really need to be happy? So get it down to that. You know, I mean, I can go for a walk with my dog and be as happy as I could possibly be, or spend a week with my grandchildren. It's just what, what feeds your soul is really what you're looking for. So if you figure out what feeds your soul, that would be a way to live simply, wouldn't it? For sure. For sure. And yeah, I'm kind of like you. I'm, I'm a nurse is what I did for 29 years and I have a, a large aortic root aneurysm. So I don't work uh, anymore. I just do this nonprofit work. And I thought I was going to be able to live a, a little bit simpler life, but I keep kind of getting involved uh, all by my own doing uh, right. into things that I love to do that right. make me happy but come with an expense, you know? So I don't feel like I've figured out the balance just yet because I'm supposed to be retired, even though I'm young, you know, but I'm supposed to be retired, but I still feel like I have work to do, you know? And uh, so- We're uh, we're put on this earth to, to live up to the best of our ability. So we always are gonna have work to do. It's just find work that doesn't feel like work. Yeah. That sounds like what you're doing. 
Well, sure. That's it. Exactly. But, but unfortunately all my family or, you know, my immediately family, specifically my wife sees that she's the only one that sees that side of me of like, Oh man, this stuff you love to do, but it costs you, you know, quite a bit, you know? And so I gotta, I gotta figure that, but let's get back to you. Uh, and for any listeners out there that might have, you know, young children or in your case, grandkids, what are, what are one or two things that uh, from your coaching background that parents, grandparents can do to just embrace that role uh, of being kind of the mentor, the role model for, for their kids or grandkids? Well, I think the most important thing that an adult can do is heal their own childhood wounds because otherwise you're going to pass that generational trauma on from generation to generation. So that's number one, do your own work and heal those. So you're not passing that on to your children. Um, I also like people to look for what's right instead of what's wrong and to stop telling your child they're so smart or they won this or blah, 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 and get into what did you do today that was bigger, better, braver? Like I did this today and I was afraid to do it, but I did it anyway. What did you do that you were afraid to do? Those are better questions. You want to teach them to have a growth mindset, not to have a fixed mindset and only be willing to try the things that they can do well. So if you see your kid is somebody who doesn't want to try new sports, they're already on their way to having a fixed mindset. So try to do fun things with them and talk about how you were afraid to do something and you did it anyway. Let's do something we're both afraid of. What would that be? What would that look like? Let's go try it. Mm. That's what you want to teach your children. I love it. I love it. Again, this is wrong with Nancy Pickard, lifecoach.com. Check her out. She's got an incredible book out there. Bigger, better, braver. Uh, get that one. She's uh, kind of laid out the map for just overcoming fear uh, and taking action towards living your best life. You know, Nancy, I think we're at a great spot to kind of jump to the, to the end here. You know, we, we end every episode with this quote from John Alston, which says, the only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave behind. Mm -hmm. you're a young woman of 67 looked amazing. I let's give you another 40 years, 35 years. You're on your deathbed. Now you're getting ready to take your last breath. You're surrounded by your family and friends and all the people who've been instrumental in helping your heart just feel full of love. And as you get ready to take that last breath, what is it you want to leave behind with the people that are still going to be walking this earth? Gosh, you can have me like all like the clump. Um, well, I think I want them to just remember love, you know, guys, remember love and don't leave anything undone. Try, try to do as much as you can and just remember to love each other. Mm. Really it. I love it. I love it. Pasho, get us out of here. Nancy, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your gifts, sharing it with the world. And thank you for all your energy. I mean, if you can't listen to this and not get motivated to get up and do something, you need a life coach. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Again, listeners, we've been season three, episode 25, Nancy Pickard, lifecoach.com. Check her out again. Find her book, bigger, better, braver. Uh, Nancy, thank you. Listeners. Thank you for tuning in. Boom, baby. We out. <laughs>